In this video, I'm going to show you how to extract some pixel values from Earth Engine image or image uh, collection. In the last video, uh, I show you how to extract um, Earth Engine data, so export data, the, basically the entire image or image collection or feature collection to your computer. But sometimes you might not need the entire data set. Uh, if you just want a small piece, or if you just want to have some simple statistics and then extract the pixel values, then there's a better way uh, to do this. So I'm going to show you uh, in this video how to do that. First, let's go to uh, the website to download the novel example. Uh, you can go to tutorials.gmap.org and then click uh, asset management, extract values. And if you click this one, upper right corner here, uh, download this notebook to your computer. I'm going to download to my documents folder. I'll just hit save and after that you can open uh, an Anaconda prompt and then Conda activate G okay and then just type Jupyter Notebook hit enter it should open the notebook uh, on your browser and then navigate to directory uh, GE it's called uh, export uh, extract values so this notebook has uh, three sections and we're going to go through one by one and so first uh, let's go through the first example by the way if you uh, have installed dgmap a uh, long time ago you might want to update the package so all you need to do is just to uh, select these two and then control slash on your computer and then just hit one you should be able to update uh, gmap to your uh, latest uh, version and since i already have this i don't need to run this one once you install the package and update it, then you can import the libraries. After that, you can create the interactive map. So next, I'm going to add some data. And this data set is the one that we used before. We're going to add a uh, lens set, uh, lens set the imagery. And here, I also set the so-called uh, set uh, plot options, uh, add master cluster. So basically, when you create uh, markers on the map, uh, it's going to automatically create a cluster. So if you zoom out, it's going to uh, collapse those uh, markers into uh, one point. Okay, so first let's add uh, the data here and we have loaded the uh, lens set uh, data at the global scale. And next, uh, we can activate the inspector tool, uh, the plotting tool, and then later we can um, export the data out. So what we are trying to do here is to uh, go here and then click this one click the upper right corner uh, plotting once you hit this one if you have multiple layers you can select the data layers from the list and so in this case we only have one layer and that we just keep it as default after that you can just simply click on the map so if i click somewhere it's going to add a marker and it's going to show you here the uh the spectral signatures right uh, because the data has six uh spectral bands you're going to see the six values right so from here to here and so this is the representative representative uh spectral signature for vegetation right because it has high uh, surface refractance in the near infrared uh, band if you go to water it's going to be a very different right so water uh in a uh, red band and near infrared uh, the there's no surface refractance because most of those light were being observed uh ob observed by uh, uh by water and you can try some other like for example different signatures you can also try for example snow uh, it's going to have high refractance in the optical uh, optical bands right so you can continue to add more points the reason that uh, we add earlier like a marker cluster set equal to two this one here is because when you if you want this one if you zoom zoom out it's going to collapse into just one point and this will be pretty nice if you want if you have too many points then uh, the marker class might be a, 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 a good option to have once you have these points all right so earlier we click a number of points uh, i think we have six like five five points here and the other points so we have six points when you click the point right you have the spectral scene so you, each one each point basically has uh six values six pixel values for it, uh, the six bands are uh, correspondingly so how can we actually export the data uh, from from Google Search Engine to your computer, uh, you can use this function. So called uh, extract values to points, right? So in here we set the output uh, directory. We're gonna save this one to our downloads folder, and the file name we're gonna use is called uh, points.ssp. 
you can either export the swap file or you can export just a csv so if it's just a csv and then you just get one file if you have a uh, swap file then you basically import the entire data set so you, it's going to be a vector so all you need to do is just execute uh, this one only set the file pass and then so map dot extract values to points this one will execute and um to extract all the pixel uh, all the points and let me open the downloads folder here um uh, i have some data let me delete the data first and so next let's execute this one and you see here it's pretty quick right so only a couple of less than one second now you have the file so if you select uh, export as a swap file it's also going to export as a csv so you can open the csv if you want uh, directly using uh, Excel. Oops. Not sure what happened, but uh, I should have this one here. Okay, Excel. As you can see, right, we have six points, and it's going to export the the uh, the values for each band. It's also going to export the coordinates. So long as you let you. In case later, if you want to uh, uh, maybe add this to other uh, GS program, then you can use uh, the longitude and latitude to add the point. But since we can export as a swap file, you can also load this one directly to the map. So I can open QGS or ArcGIS, uh, whatever GS uh, software packages you are using, then you can load the swap file to the map and you can take a look. So this provides you an, 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 a nice way for you to extract pixel values out of Google S engine. So uh, if you just want some pixel value, you don't need the entire image. This might be the way to go. So once I have this one, I can add some uh, maybe the uh, some uh, base data, and then all I need to do just to go here, uh, drag the layer to the map, and now you have these points, right? So you can also open the attribute table. Right click, open attribute table. Uh, you should see the same thing. So this attribute attribute table contains the same information as the csv i showed you earlier okay so this is how easy it is uh, to export data from you can continue to add more points uh, it's going to uh, uh, extract low spectral signatures uh, for you so the next one i'm going to show you here is a slightly different right so this one is a lens set data you have multiple spectral bands sometimes you might be dealing with time series uh, images so first let me create an interactive map and again, I'm going to add some data. So this time we're going to use Modis, um, Modis data. And so from 2015 to 2019, and we just need the NDVI. So we want to uh, normalize difference of uh, uh, vegetation index. Also, because this one is, oh, uh, we need to execute uh, the color map. And let me do it one more time. Hopefully it work. Okay, so this is the NDVI, so the, the color. Uh, the palette here comes from the color map, so make sure that you import the color maps and then you can use whatever palette you want, right? You can, it can, it can be NDVI, it can be DM, you just need, for example, dot, and then you can just ND, um, maybe NDWI if you want, right? Uh, it's going to be water, but in this case, because they're using uh, vegetation, so it's better to be, there are so many options, there are almost 200, so you just hit tap, uh, you will see the entire list of color maps. So this provides you a, a nice way for you to select without having to worry about remember uh, what kind of a, um, a, a palette color you need to provide. Uh, there's so many. So you choose the one that you like. And again, I'm just going to use like NDVI. You should be able to see this one. Uh, pretty nice uh, representation of our vegetation. Uh, you can zoom out if you can want to see the global scale. So once you have the data, oh, okay. Also make sure that you use the um, click, uh convert the image collection to the image and if you see from the layer here right we have the visualization so this is just one layer but what we are trying to extract here is actually the time series we want to extract all the pixels the time series of those pixel values so uh, you need to convert that one to an image using the collection doc to bands otherwise you only have one band or three then this, this is not what we want so this one is critical make sure that you um uh, add this line after that, similarly, we are going to set the prop options. We're going to add my marker cluster. And also, uh, we don't want to add a point, but we want to also have the reducer called uh, e dot reducer uh, dot mean. What this one really means is that uh, you can not only click on the map to uh, add uh, uh, points, 
but we also want to be able to actually extract uh, if we just select a, a rectangle so let me show you in here let's click this one and make sure you select this one here the time series not this one so the time series basically have all the spectral bands that we need and once you have this you can either click on the map right so now i click on the map it's going to show you the time series of the ndvi uh, for for the entire uh, image collection if i click the other one you should be able to see the same thing right so these are all the uh, things you can do using gmap but this is only one point sometimes you might want to let's say you want to uh, calculate the mean pixel values within a region uh, you can also do that so you can click the uh, rectangle uh, two and then you can select you can draw a rectangle so i'm going to draw a rectangle it's going to create uh, and also compute the average of all the pixels within that rectangle for each image so and this is why you end up with multiple uh, uh, values because we have a time series images so basically it's calculated the mean some uh, let me give you another example if you want to calculate the mean elevation uh mean um ndvi for your city or for your state for multiple years this is the way you can do that you can draw a rectangle you can also uh import official collection so you can also select a, a circle if you want so i can maybe do another rectangle it's only going to take you a couple of seconds and you can get the result you can do that for a much larger scale right so i can also maybe do it in here on the map and just doing the computation and now get you the result so it depends on the location that you draw on the map uh, you're going to get different patterns right so different lane cover types are going to have uh, different uh, um, vegetation uh, indices uh, values so once you uh, uh, get the result that you want uh, to draw the rectangles then you can export the data so this one is pretty much uh, very much similar to what we did earlier you can export the data so i'm going to define we're going to export this one to our downloads folder and the name we're going to use is uh, ndvi.shsp and we are going to use the same function here extract values to points just execute and we can come back to here we should have this one ndvi right so again we can open this one uh you open the csv so earlier we draw similarly with six rectangles right so the first three points we basically just the pixel values but the others uh the later the, the other three points because uh we, we drew the rectangles uh it calculated the average so that's why you see some decimal points right if you just get the original pixel values those are all integer and that's why they are still integer but if you calculate the mean depends on how many pixels within your region you might get um uh, decimal numbers so this is what you get and you can use this to do further uh, analysis so one means um, uh, bang one so all the way to here uh, more than 100 bands right so it's a lot but this is something you can extract easily from uh, google engine okay so that's the second example how you can extract uh, pixel values the next one i'm going to show you here is actually not extracting pixel values but rather creating some training samples um so i also have a short uh a video here you can click the video to take a look but uh not this one you probably need to maybe import uh update the package let me show you in here sometimes it's not uh updated anyway so this let me just give you a live demo in here you will understand what i'm talking about so once you create a map and on right here you can select this one uh click training samples so once you click on the map you can uh, select from here you can uh, basically these are the attributes you want to add to uh, the, the, the the file and so i can say for example lane cover maybe before i'm doing that i want to add uh, the base map so you can click the base map and change it to maybe google uh, hybrid okay so this is better to click training samples and click the button and I can say first one lane cover. Uh, usually you want to start from zero because uh, in Google's engine, you want to use the training samples for image classification. Uh, it's better to start from zero, one, two, three. So the first lane cover maybe the value is zero, and then we can have a label for this lane cover. And uh, we're going to use this one uh, for example. Let's say uh, water, uh, for example, and then just hit apply. 
you can also change the color uh, but for this one i'm gonna keep as a default right so once you have that you can just simply click on the map to draw a rectangle so for water right awesome these are all water and then you can maybe draw a couple of uh, polygons somewhere and then uh just cancel uh, that's fine so the next one let's add another one so one and then the label they say uh, vegetation but uh, we can change the color maybe to uh, green okay and again hit apply then you can start drawing the rectangle so around the vegetation area right a polygon it, it can also be a polygon it doesn't have to be a rectangle okay finish so the last one we're gonna add uh, increase to two and this one might be they say um, um urban for example or bear lane or something like me just let's call bear lane and this one we can change maybe to red color okay and then hit apply then we can draw a rectangle, for example, somewhere around this in the desert. Then it can so okay. So we are done. Once you create this, uh, you can actually export this one to your uh, computer. And um, right, because this course is not about doing this video is not about doing uh, image classification, but I'm just showing you a way that you can create a polygon and and export this one as a shape file to your computer. So how can we access these training samples that we just uh, created? You can actually use the map dot user ri. So the user ri stores all the polygon that you just uh, drew, and then you can just alt enter. You should be able to see that okay, this is a free source collection. And if you want to see uh, how many inside, you can use the dot get info to see the coordinates. And this is actually a, a long list, like right? a long list uh, we have. Uh, I think more than 10 uh, polygons uh, in here and you will be able to see here each one is a polygon you also have different color but you also uh, see here the I the properties right so the properties here we have the color we have the label we have the land cover right so the first three that we drew uh, water and land cover value is zero but if we scroll down to the end right so different colors different um, label and land cover types once you have this, we can actually export the data to our computer. So what we can do is actually use geemap.ee -E and then export, right? Or you can just directly ee -E to uh, SSP. So it might be easier, okay? So, and within this function, you can pass in different parameters. So the first one here is the easy uh, object. And that's actually this one here, uh, map.user.ri because it's a free source collection okay and then um from here you can also export this one uh to your uh computer so i'm going to maybe export let me set an output folder first and i'm going to export to my downloads folder you can go do the same thing in here or just like this one okay and copy and paste in here we can remove this one and i'm going to choose the name called maybe uh samples okay so once you define the file path, then I can just pass in this one here as a variable and then just hit enter. You see it's going to generate the, the link and to download this one to a computer. Okay, uh, it's done and call samples to uh, SHP. Let's see. Okay, so it's here. Then all you need to do is just to drag this one to uh, GS software and I can here drag this one back to here. You see, you have all the polygons that we drew earlier. And then you can right click open the attribute table. You should be able to see this that we added, right? So the, because this is random, so it might not necessarily the, the all the same uh, uh, type order like alphabetically, but as you can see, this is pretty nice because you can draw any polygons on the map and then export them directly to your computer as a shape file. So this provides you a way for you to create a shape file without having to use ArcGIS or QGIS that you have to uh, go through a different uh, uh, like all kind of steps to create and this is a simply draw and then uh, just one line of code and then you can export okay so um, nice and easy okay so that's all for this uh video i hope to see you in the next one take care bye bye